Good morning, friends. Today is August 5th, and yesterday we had a bit of a tragedy. Um, I'm back to work a couple days a week, and it spiked up to 112 here, and I did not increase the water, missed my watering, and it had been doing so well once a day but now that the heat's up it does need to be twice a day and I did not have it on automatic drip I was hand operating and now in here in the arched cattle panels this side of the of the um, panel all of these vines are looking really good because they were still pretty safe in all the shade. Now here's a new discovery. As of yesterday, I have little baby watermelons. There's one here. There's one here. And there was one more. Here, this one looks a little darker. I'm not sure if these are different varieties. I had two plants that lost their labeling, or they were volunteers, and they came up and I went ahead and planted them along the back part. But I also have some melons coming up right here, and I believe this is a new Sakota melon right here. We can see how tiny this little guy is. But he's been pollinated. These, you can see the size compared to my hand. They're already a handful. This may be from this super baby, or sugar baby, pardon me. And that is one that's labeled right there. And it is vining up, and I'm assuming that's what is going there. Now, I've got... These are the squash, the spaghetti squash. Still getting lots of flowers. And not seeing anything set over here. But here's where the damage occurred. And this was the afternoon sun caught this. And you can see all of these were wilted yesterday when I came out. Got home after work and these were toast. Everything had shriveled. There's some next to that, but some of these will just come off the vine. They won't hurt it because the rest of the vine is still alive. So I was hoping a good watering would do it. Even my beans that are trellising, you can see some of the damage down here. But that's what the plant does. It pulls back on the water from the leaves and lets the roots hold onto their water. Oh, I do have a spaghetti squash that's set here. Look at that little guy. Okay. The good news uh, when everything wilted was that I could suddenly see everything that had been pollinated and had started. So, luckily, I haven't lost any whole plants, although this one looks about the worst for wear. And it's because it gets afternoon sun. So this, now it may look like Grapes of Wrath, but I have now extended a shade cloth where the afternoon shade sun will, will now get some shade. Look at these guys trellising almost over to the middle and we have this coming in and there was oh yeah he's still there this is a sp spaghetti squash that has he's up pretty high he's probably gonna need a little hammock we had talked about that before but there are i know there's a cicada melon in here that's all of a sudden just Appeared. So this is a good size little guy. And the cucamelons, 
are really struggling. They were shriveled up pretty bad yesterday, but they're coming back. These beans have now had a nice soak and they're standing up, trellising back again. And here, it, this is a little tiny, oh, look at that. They're coming to visit me. You know, there was a time I was deathly afraid of a bee coming towards me and now I know he's not coming for me he's coming for the sugar in these flowers so here's one of my first bush cucumbers and very excited the basil's looking fabulous it didn't wilt at all it seems to like the heat sunflowers now I added in a little color to help draw the bees over here so I've got my little metal flowers added in but I will have flowers on these sunflowers pretty soon I got two going there another one right here and I found some cute little add-ons at the Dollar Dollar Tree had some gorgeous little metal yard art can't resist because after all it's only a dollar so here's where this side you can see there is some toastiness. Not bad, but you can see there is some, a little bit of leaf damage. Something's been gnawing on them, but better on the outside leaves than anything else. There is some vining that's still very green. This part's doing very well. This side had been a very, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, look at this. You know what this is? This, I believe, is a loofah. This looks like my first loofah. Oh, very cool. Now, that's ooh, exciting. And he's, again, this is probably something I wouldn't have seen if they hadn't all wilted because suddenly what was growing underneath the leaves. Oh yeah, there's some crispy critters here. But considering these were all laying flat yesterday, I couldn't even video it, it was too devastating. And I thought, okay, some water and prayer, and we'll see what happens. This one will probably have to get trimmed off, but not bad, considering they were laying down flat and just sadder than sad. Now I do have, this one has, I have gone in here and reworked this bed the day before and I was very worried. I'm gonna take off the shade cloth so you can see it. This one, everything on that trellis, I don't know if you saw it the other day where the trellis had been kind of enveloped. So as the runners got longer the other day I reached them up and just tucked them in the trellis overhead since they aren't getting to the side they're in the middle and oh my gosh the pollinators are going crazy so in doing this I got another plant up off of the ground and there are some fabulous little starts here I can get into them. This one's getting pollinated right here. And there's some already starting there. The spaghetti squash has headed over and it's going to be trellising up over there, which is fine. I had to kind of help save my tomatillos. They were sprawling, so I had to kind of put them in a cage and keep them upright away from things. Now my concern also is that my peppers are getting lost in here. There's one right here. He's getting kind of enveloped. So I was trying to clear away some of the extra leaves that don't need to be there for the plant so that my other plants in between, these are gonna be my into the fall peppers. So those are going. I did get a little flower going so for some pollinating and for getting being a deterrent for the 
the uh, critters, all the little bugs. Now one bug that doesn't seem to get deterred is the ants. Now when they start crawling on something, I know that it's ripe. But I do have, this one's red, about ready. I did pick one yesterday. This is a Sakota melon, and the ants were on it, so I picked it. I figured if they're going to get to it, I'll get to them first. But here, where's my opening? Here's one of my peppers, and they are getting flowers. So these are, these are my very long-growing, struggling peppers. I had probably two dozen plants and nowhere to go. And they just sat patiently in their little in their little pots. This one's getting some nice sun and getting happy. But I don't think I see. It's got a lot of new leaves. I don't know if you remember at the beginning, the leaves were kind of curled in like this. But now the new leaves and around them look very happy and healthy. So none of this leaf curl, they're starting to get happy. There's Miss Taz, hey girl. Look who's come and visited us in the garden. What? And today we have a water bowl, so she knows where her water bowl is. These are the ones that have started growing outside. These are more cucamelons. And I did have tomatillos were growing through and I've pulled them back into this cage and it's struggling a little from all of, I moved all of those branches and it wasn't very happy with me, but it's coming back. And it didn't, this bed did not suffer any issues. Oh dear, look at this. I believe this, I don't think it's a honeydew. I think this is another Sakota melon because it's smooth. The honeydews have like a rough texture and yet it's right where my honeydew is coming out. So, but these vines are crisscrossing each other. So no telling if I mess with them too much. Now I made a little more room. I got rid of some of the leaves, extra leaves, and I really vine these things up and in. Now I see a very big squash leaf. That is a spaghetti squash, or flower, excuse me. And that one's going. And I know there was one other thing here. I passed him up and he's in the works. I've already picked two nice cucumbers. This is one more of my Armenian cucumbers. He's about half grown, maybe less, maybe about a fourth. These get to 12 inches, probably good 10 inches would be plenty so that it's not overblown. The one I had picked, the first one, I didn't see it until it was a full 12 inches, picked it, and it was almost hollow inside. Now this is my jungle. This, I've put up some trellises in here, but it's seriously trying to get out of this encasement. They've gone all the way up over the trellises and back down. But what we do see in trellising, this is a couple. Aren't these great? These are the Sakota sweet melons. Even though these are small, they seem to be very plentiful. Here's another little start. And I have yet to see any, um, let's see, looking down inside. I've yet to see anything come forth on the, uh, oh my goodness, it's been enveloped. I'm looking for, each of these beds has two tomatillo plants. Ah, oh, there it is. If you can find it, there it is coming out of the corner. It has grown from here, which it's kind of in the middle of all those other vines. I have not rearranged this and I'm kind of almost afraid to after getting everything else messed up but I'll work on this today I think this is my project see if I can get these guys a little more in line see some of these big big leaves I've been going in and snapping off because number one the bees can't get down there 
and do any pollinating. And number two, they're shading all the other plants. And number three, they don't need this many leaves to photosynthesize. They've got plenty. And if so, if just those will all go in the compost. So I just cleaned up that area in order to make things more visible. There's a nice flower that hopefully got pollinated. This is the my other tomatillo. The leaves look a little worse for wear. Something's gotten to them. And I did spray some BT over here. I probably need to do it again because I do have cabbages and kohlrabi, which those are those leaves that like to get the, um, the little caterpillars. Here, look at these. These are doing great. These are my um, pumpkins. These are the sugar pie pumpkin. There's two more sugar pie here. And this is a, I forget what it's called, it's Colombian or Canadian or something starts with a C. But it, that, that one in the middle is going to be a big, a regular size pumpkin. These are going to be smaller size. And up at the house in the seed barn, I have a, I did make two more starts of um, the uh, baby bear. So the baby bear pumpkins hadn't made it. So I did some more and they popped right up. I don't know if you can see this, but there is so much happening. This here is the radicchio in the center. They didn't seem to mind getting getting the heat. Look at this vine. i got to move him over. This is just basically what I'm doing. I'm going to have to get something in here to vine this up. But the radicchio look fabulous, especially this one. And uh, look at these pretty little leaves. So pretty. Oops. Look at the color on that. Well, almost more purple. I think this is a, a different leaf that's got a tag, which again, I had issues with tags washing off. This is a Swiss chard right here. And in seeing how well those were doing, I started some from seed. See the, the damage on the kohlrabi? That's from uh, the little critters. And I have seen those little butterflies coming through, the moths that lay the eggs. So I have seen them in here, so I need to get another treatment. But my seedlings, this was my test to see if this rack was going to be able to make it in this location. So I had to try it. It's kind of what I've had to do is see what would happen with the sun, the shade, the water, the size of the container to see what is successful to hold enough water and moisture and shade in this heat. Well, obviously my arched cattle panels over there were fine in the middle, but where they got the sun in the side, they were toast. This is a yellow pear tomato coming back very strong. Can't see any flowers yet. This one is coming along, I believe. Most of these that are making it are yellow pear because I had a, a whole bunch of them come out at the same time. These guys are going to come out. I have some new tomatoes plants, and being that these are so far along, so leggy, I am going to be planting new tomatoes down at the base, right next to the other ones. When these when these are out and done, then the other ones will be coming up and taking the next round. And then around the edge of the planter, I have some onion sets that I want to put in here and some garlic. And I got to look up and see how, how early or how late, what timeline to put those in. I don't want to put them in too soon. And here are my spoon tomatoes. And these are the tiniest of tiny flowers. They are just so adorable. So I'm waiting. I know it's still too hot for them to set fruit, but the fact that they are, oh, I'm getting some new growth. 
the fact that they are flowering gives me a lot of hope. And this one is re-sprouting at the base. And he has, he has some flowers at the top here too. He's got a little flower right here. So there's hope. I have a couple more barrels that are going to be coming in. But it's today I have hope. And as I shared this with my daughter last night, she mentioned, oh, there is a silver lining. I said, yes, I was able to see my um, all the items. I'm going to get in the shade in here. I was able to see everything that's coming back. Things are not always dead when they lose water. Sometimes they just need a little more water. And it's a good reminder to keep an eye on the weather. So lesson learned. And all of this, is, these are lessons as we go. So I want to share that with you today. And I did want to show you some things that I found to be most inspirational up in my garden. And I've got my little trucks that say grateful. And I'm grateful to have a harvest. I'm grateful to have a plan that allows me to grow through the summer and going into the fall. I'm grateful that my husband was able to build this and help me with this. And he's he's not a he's not a big veggie eater, but when I told him I was going to grow potatoes, he got all excited. So, you know, you have to you have to get them where they like. They like melon. He likes melons. He's just not a salad guy. And that's okay. So, until we meet again, just want to say this is Cookie from Havasu Height, excuse me, Hummingbird Heights Farm. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me, and we'll see you soon.